And this will really augment, like you said, us in finance, but also all of the business people, if you use it this way. If you think now, much quicker I can come up with solutions, even though I don't have experience with it. But if I have a critical thinking and I can use it with me, I will make things faster and also better and help really move the needle. Mm-hmm. That's what I show always because it's not about just doing fancy stuff and writing nice emails. It's about how you can every day work better, like solve your problems you have at work, and at the end, as an individual, also be better recognized for the work you do. Hello, and welcome to Tech for Finance, where we help finance professionals leverage technology to level up their lives. I'm your host, Adam Chilton, and in this episode, we're speaking again with Nicolas Boucher, who's a previous podcast guest that returns to speak about AI. He's the founder of the AI and Finance Club and corporate finance trainer focused on chat GPT implementations. Nicolas built his career across corporate finance and controlling roles at companies like Thales and PwC, and has worked all over the world. After 15 years working in corporate finance roles, Nicola is now on a mission to help finance professionals learn how to use AI through his online training programs, workshops, and now the AI in Finance Club, where he teaches teams how to implement ChatGPT for finance processes like FPNA, budgeting, forecasting, and much, much more. Outside work, Nicola is a family man with two daughters who enjoys cooking, exercising, and discovering new cuisines and cultures, but his favorite place for food and sites will always be in his hometown of Brittany in France, which is, we discussed it last time, didn't we? Um, if you like what you hear today, please subscribe to Tech for Finance on your favorite podcast platform and on YouTube, and please sign up to the free Thank Tech It's Friday newsletter at techforfinance.com. But thanks for joining us today, Nicola. It's amazing to have you back. Yeah, thanks, Adam, and Really glad to see that you continue this podcast because you got so many great guests. And uh, I think what I like is your angle about bringing the tech and finance together. And I think you're the only one really doing that uh, this way. And if we think also about what you do on top of the podcast by bringing your own deep dives to the public and that everybody can learn so much from you, you are doing a really good job. Uh, that really means a lot, actually, because I mean, how, how many followers you got now? Like seven hundred and fifty thousand or something bonkers like that. So, no, you've you've always been a role model. So it's it's great to have you on the on the podcast again. And thanks thanks for coming back. So we've got a lot to talk about. Um, I'm excited to to get stuck in. But there's been a bit of change with you recently, right? Because you've decided, right? Well, I'm you know I'm going to make my own stamp on the world, right? You know, I'm I'm going to do my own thing, um, which is great. So. You focused on AI, which of course is really hot, even a year in. So I'm wondering whether you can just start off by giving us your impression of how AI and what you've seen from a finance perspective has changed since ChatGPT was released last November. And it's because it's over a year on now, isn't it? So how have you seen things change and how have you seen sort of finance get to terms with, with so much change in the past year? Yeah, so what I've seen over the last 12 months, because every day I'm talking to people who are either beginners or advanced, and the adoption curve where people, um, I think one year ago, I think we were like you and me and maybe like two or three other guys, (laughs) we were maybe a group of 51 or people in the world who used uh, ChatGPT and already thought, how can we use it for finance? Mm -hmm. And now I'm sure in every company, there will be this guy or this girl who loves tech and who is already an advanced user in ChatGPT and has already use cases in finance. And so the adoption curve for this, if we compare to Excel, Pivot, Python, Power BI, it's so fast because in companies normally it takes five years to adopt new tools. And now I even see a lot of CFOs who understood that they can use it themselves because they use it to, I would say, the easy way to write emails or to make some research. But they get their team who are more tech savvy and they want them to use it and to see what is possible to do with ChatGPT and AI. And just to echo your point there, 
there is, in my experience as well, still quite a big gap between the people that haven't really used AI before. And as you say, you know, they've used it to draft an email and then, you know, maybe not spent any more time on it compared to the ones that have got really stuck into it. Right. And, um, I found, cause I did the guide, right. It's, it's out of date now. So I paused for a second because I don't want to sell something that's, that's out of date with, with the guide. Um, but I had a chat to, to one of the customers from, from the guide because I offered, um, three, three, um, 30 minutes consulting just to help them put the, the, um, ideas in the guide into, into practice. And I remember getting on with, with this guy, um, and immediately he was asking me questions and I was like, hang on a sec, I'm really going to have to think about this because <laughs> so, so he, he was in that category of he'd been on it. Like he'd been like spending lots and lots of time on it, but it keeps us on our toes. Right. So, I mean, we can, we can start by, and, and I posted about it um, today actually, or yesterday in terms of low hanging fruit with, with chat GPT and you mentioned a couple there. So you've got, you know, drafting emails and, and now chat GPT is connected to the internet, or at least the pro version is you can use it for better research with more up-to-date data. So when you're coaching and guiding people, where do you recommend they start? Because there's a big difference between just using it as a, as a text assistant to help generate content versus what I'm sure we'll get into in terms of generating code for Python that you can then take and, and use in other ways for, for forecasting and various stuff. So where, where do you tend to start? Yeah, so what was interesting is the first uh, cohort I did in April. Mm -hmm. So AI was really not yet, uh, the adoption was quite uh, small. Almost everybody was amazed about what it can do. I could just show, oh, look, it can draft an email. People were like, wow. Then like the court after, uh, I think that was six weeks after in June, just that didn't impress people anymore. And I was like, okay, it was already like in two months, people learn how, that writing is not uh, impressive anymore. So uh, then I had to show how you can solve problems with ChatGPT and basically like make a cash action plan for you. Then... Really quickly, people got that, okay, you can do non-finance stuff with ChatGPT, but they don't really care about this because they have heard and seen that everywhere. What mm -hmm. they wanted to hear from us is how you can deal with finance topics like financial analysis, working with Excel. And this was really a problem uh, before ChatGPT4 because ChatGPT was really bad at doing formulas, mm -hmm. really bad at calculating. And so I had to find uh, frameworks to make ChatGPT calculate better. And I showed that to uh, my, um, my students. But then when ChatGPT 4 came, and I think it was in, uh, in August, September, or something like this, the fact that you could upload an Excel file, the fact that you could then generate Excel file, and then that you could do graphs with Python, I can still remember when I uploaded a fake headcount file and I just said, just make the headcount analysis and it dropped like four or five visuals that even myself, I will not have thought about like salary distribution by department using a box plot. I was, wow, this is like, now we are talking mm -hmm. <laughs> and now like uh, it's going to help us a lot. And I showed that now to Everywhere I go to the webinar, I still show the same example and people are blown out because it's concrete. You see visualization, you see on a big file what it can do and it's quite fast. And it does something better than what people can do if they, are, they don't have this expertise. Mm -hmm. And that's the big change. And now people are asking me, and that's what I'm teaching them, how can they do that without the confidentiality issue? Because that's always the, the question. Mm -hmm. And we teach them that. We teach them how you can have the turnaround and still get the value of ChatGPT. Then, like, you get this um, ChatGPT teaching you how you can do this analysis in your own environment, in Excel or in Python. And then people see directly the effect. And you can see their mind racing on all of the possibilities of how they can automate their finance based on uh, AI. And it's, yeah, that, that jump from 
3PT5, which is still the one used in the free version for anybody that's listening, by the way. So using the free version of ChatGPT, you don't have the most intelligent model and, and still people don't appreciate that. But I was giving a demo on a webinar yesterday of a few tools uh, with a company called Received who do, um, they do AI cash receivable. Uh, it's a really cool tool, but they invited me on to go through a few of the more common ones. So uh, ChatGPT, um, free versus paid. And then we went into Notable, which is kind of, uh, I mean, you mentioned Google Colab there. It's kind of similar to that. It's a Jupyter notebook that you can use, a uh, notebook that you can use to run code and produce visualizations. And you can use ChatGPT to control Notable to produce visualizations, which is pretty cool. And then we had a look at Poe, P-O-E, which is um, where you can use lots of different large language models. So you can use OpenAI, you can use Claude, you can use Llama, and that's free, which is, which is really cool. And we created some bots in Poe because to create bots in ChatGPT, you have to have the pro version and pay for it to get GPTs. Whereas in Poe, you can create a bot without needing to pay for it, which is cool. You've still got to pay for the more advanced models. So you've got to pay for uh, GPT-4 and you've got to pay for Claude, the uh, 1,000 character or the, you know, the one with the big token limit. But there's some really quick wins to be had there. But the reason I mentioned that is um, I was taking some of the example prompts from the guide because I didn't want to type as I was demoing because it was a, a waste of time, right? And one of them was um, create a cheat sheet for Excel formulas related to X. Yeah, just to do a really quick example of the difference between the free and the more advanced version. But the prompt said, please include columns for syntax and give me an example formula and then a description as well. The free version obviously was quick and it built the table pretty quickly and it was pretty decent. But what was really interesting, and I'd not realized this before, is that actually in asking ChatGPT to provide information on formulas and syntax, it does actually have to look at, am I being correct in my calculations? Because a formula is driving a calculation, right? So as soon as we switched to the pro version of ChatGPT, it did that thing where it starts looking at the advanced data analysis. I was sure. I thought, yeah. I thought why is it doing this? Because I thought, you know, surely it's just going to spit. I just want it to spit out a table, right? But it actually queried itself and it said, no, I can't give a good enough answer using the base model. I need to use the data analysis because you want accurate syntax and accurate formulas. And it was amazing that it worked that out automatically and it immediately produced a more accurate result. So yeah, the difference between the free and the paid version is, and, and uh, you know, I'm not affiliated with, with chat. Yeah, we use it every, we every day. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. So it's, it's amazing to see. So um, when I do, when I teach and uh, yesterday I had a webinar with, uh, I think 300 people were connected. Mm -hmm. I always show the free version because two reasons. Me as an instructor, it's much faster to get a result. So I don't have to wait until the <laughs> results come. Yeah. So um, like the aha effect is much bigger, mm -hmm. but also people 90% or 95%, they don't have the paid version. So mm -hmm. I don't want to make them see something that they cannot have. Mm -hmm. And um, I still feel that for 90% or the, of the cases, you don't need the, the paid version mm -hmm. and the free is already so good. Mm -hmm. And um, also on the paid versions, the fact that it's slow, the fact that sometimes it, it searches on internet, and I don't like that because like this, I'm not sure anymore yeah. if, uh, if it has been uh, trained. Yeah. Um, that is a bit of limit for me. So yeah. I like the four when I play with formula formulas, when I do analysis, when I want to create files, when I want also to do something quite complex. Mm -hmm. um, I like the 3.5 when it needs to go fast and when I want to do some easy demo. So that's how I choose between 3.5 and, and 4. Quick one, guys. I'd like to take a moment to invite you to the AI Finance Club. The AI Finance Club isn't just another professional group. It's a dedicated platform to help finance pros integrate AI into their work. Now, with AI revolutionizing every aspect of business, Staying up to date and building AI skills is no longer an option if you don't want to get left behind. So with a membership every month, you'll receive a live workshop with industry experts, including me, to help you apply AI in practical finance scenarios. You'll get an in-depth review of the latest AI tools tailored for finance, so you know what works best. 
You'll get customized AI prompts to help transform the way that you work, curated news and updates on AI advancements in the finance sector, and deep dives into AI in finance processes to help optimize your finance operations. Now, personally, I do believe that a hive mind approach to learning works wonders. So on top of what I've already mentioned, you will have access to a community chat where you can connect, share, and learn from a network of finance professionals who are all embracing AI together. Now, as a Tech for Finance listener, you'll receive 10% off your first annual subscription, plus you'll receive free access to the entire ChatGPT for Finance course, both the videos and written guides. Now, to take advantage of this offer, go to techforfinance.com forward slash AI and enter the code ADAM100 at checkout. Once again, that's techforfinance.com forward slash AI with the code ADAM100 at checkout. See you there. Yeah. And that was another game-changing moment for me when ChatGPT4 was released. I was a bit disappointed because they made this big announcement saying it's multimodal, right? And, and multimodal just means that it can take lots of different types of data. And I was really interested because they released it, you know, when they drew the um, the website yes, yes, on the yes. napkin and they took a picture and ChatGPT did it. When they first released ChatGPT4, the image recognition wasn't there and I was really annoyed because I'm like, you promised me images and I'd not get images. Um, but anyway, the first time that it actually generated a Word document for me and it actually generated an Excel spreadsheet for me, I was like, this is, this is absolutely bonkers, right? Because... When I first released the guide, that was with the free version. And there was a section in the guide um, that was how to use ChatGPT to create Python so that you can generate a PowerPoint presentation, for example. And that's why the reason that the guide is out of date now, because you don't need to do that anymore. You just use ChatGPT, right? And it downloads it, it for you. So merging spreadsheets together, you know, or creating a Word template, it'll actually produce a document. And pff, that was a that was a mind-blowing moment. Yeah, I remember when the first time I used ChatGPT4 and let do yeah, Excel work, so for me, so upload or download or modify an Excel work and calculate for me. I remember like going out of my office and going to my wife say, okay, now like every, all of the people who tells you that ChatGPT is not going to help them, like this is not possible anymore. Like just look what it can do. And yeah. we're both like blown away by, by what was happening in front of our eyes and how fast also this came. Right. And now it's maybe for finance, maybe not that relevant, mm -hmm. but have you seen this, um, this new concept of not thinking about data text uh, code, but more how to observe the word to, so not LLM anymore, because LLM is basically like just bits of data mm -hmm. that are uh, analyzed uh, based on text but more uh, watching how the world is really is, so how it is. And um, so I think it's general world model, the, the new concept and Midjourney came out with this. It's not only Midjourney who came out with this, yeah. but saying that the next step is not how AI understand the world that us human um, translated in internet, because internet is just a bit of data that human put it inside, mm -hmm. plus captors. No, it's how you can just let AI observe the world as it is. Mm -hmm. Like, it would be a different type of animals coming on our planet and looking mm -hmm. at the world as it is mm -hmm. and understand things that we don't understand about the world yet and make connections. And that's a new concept in, uh, in AI on, okay, LLM is only what human built until now. Yeah. yeah. No, like what exists in the world, in the real world, observe it with captors, with videos, with um, sensors that us human maybe also don't get because we have our five senses and we have not seen all of the world as well. So that is uh, something, a big change, but like the computation to reach this level, I'm really curious uh, where we are going to see uh, the first results. Yeah, and how expensive it's gonna be, yeah? <laughs> <laughs> And, and we can talk about Copilot in a bit because uh, there's still a, a really big unknown about how much that's going to cost for a, like for a normal person, right? That isn't on a like massive business enterprise plan. But but maybe we come back to that. But to come back to your point there, I remember when they were first testing some of these models, irrespective of whether it was ChatGPT, 
is they try and do a test to say, um, in your response, try and end every sentence with the word Apple. Yeah, that's a test. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And and as you say there, because the large language model doesn't see words as words, it just sees them as characters or tokens or um, what whatever else it's called. Yeah, tokens. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, it just come back wrong. GPT four is better. Right, but still not perfect. It still doesn't do it every every time, right? So it's interesting what you're saying there. If it does actually understand the concept of a word and and how they're arranged, but coming back to a point that you mentioned previously there about when you were generate uh, generating visualizations, um, and and what you said there was it produced results that I hadn't thought about myself before. Yep. And I want to come back to that because I think it's a really important point because it's like speaking to a human that is maybe more experienced to you, right? So, so when I speak to you, I learn something new every time, you know, you say something and it's never occurred to me before to think about something in a specific way. I think having an AI that can help you think critically in a different way is going to be even more important moving forwards because then you can have the benefit of your own experience and the years that you've spent doing your job or whatever you do, but then you've got an AI that's augmenting you and encouraging you to think critically. And I think what I'm going to do, um, and I'm going to try it with a GPT to see whether I can, I can do something that actually works, but I think there's a big business case for bringing critical thinking concepts into your prompting. So I remember when I was experimenting with Poe for free chat bots, um, it was a, like a finance formula bot. So the base instruction I gave was something like, you know, act as a master of Excel. Whenever you're given a, a report to produce, please produce relevant formulas and VBA code. But then I also built onto, into the prompt um, something like, you know, bring a new perspective or challenge assumptions mm. or, you know, provide extra guidance, i.e. something that I've not learned about before. And the quality of the response was immediately better because not only was it giving the output that I'd requested, but it was then also finishing the response by saying, have you thought about it in this way? Or have you thought about this? Have you thought about that? So I think there's huge potential for us having it as a critical thinking assistant, as well as just an AI to help us produce a certain output. Yeah, there is this... um... Like there was this uh, trial of people letting their company run by AI, uh, but that's I mean it's it's a good test. Uh, like would AI make the same decision? Mm. And what I always say is that the the chatbot in front of you or the model in front of you, they only they have a database, but they don't know the context that you have. Mm-hmm. And basically, it's like. I picture it as hiring a group of experts Mm. that have read 10,000 books on project management, Mm. 10,000 books on cash, 10,000 books on inventory, on whatever is your problem. Let's imagine it's cash management. Well, if you had like few problems in your life with cash, because until now your company was really fine with generating enough cash. And this year, well, uh, there was huge problem with cash. You don't know where to start. Mm. Even if you have 15 years experience or 20 years. Well, now you can get with ChatGPT, you can get a group of experts who can help you build an action plan and mm-hmm. also come with concrete actions that you can discuss with other teams. And when you meet tomorrow the production team and explain them, okay, like, how can we solve our cash problem by improving inventories? It's not like you have to ask them how to do it. No, you can already come prepare because mm-hmm. you asked your team that is expert with inventories and uh, knows what type of solutions are low hanging fruits to have quickly cash from your inventories or quickly stop spending cash on it mm-hmm. without breaking the supply chain and disrupting it. And this will really augment, like you said, us in finance, but also all of the business people, if you use it this way, mm-hmm. if you think now much quicker, I can come up with solutions, even though I don't have experience with it. But if I have a critical thinking and I can use it with me, I will make things faster and also better and help really move the needle. Mm-hmm. And that's what I show always 
because it's not about just doing fancy stuff and writing nice emails. It's about how you can every day work better, like solve your problems you have at work. And at the end, as an individual, also be better recognized for the work you do. And thinking about that then, so the advantage that you have using these tools is you've got 15 years of experience in finance, right? So if an AI produces a set of results that says, this is what you can do, or these are my recommendations, you've got the knowledge to be able to pick and choose, right? That's useful. I'm going to ignore that. What do you think? And again, you know, nobody really knows, but obviously we have junior staff members. And and it, actually it was a it was a comment on a post that I did when I went to a Microsoft conference a couple of weeks ago, which which mm-hmm. I told you about. Um you, you got slides in you, and that was all around copilot. And I did a post about it, and somebody commented on the post saying something like, um, is this creating more problems than it solves by having inexperienced people use an AI without knowing how it's generated its responses? Because we can tell that's a good result and that's a bad result. But in the future, if you've got junior people, they will put more trust in the AI because it's part of their daily workflow. They might not have the experience to tell what's right and what's what's useful and not. Do you have any thoughts around that, about how we can make sure that people well, aren't just trusting the AI point blank and just accepting everything that it, it gives to you? Yeah, so... I think we are all learning as well not to take anything uh, blindly and um, yeah, like don't do the mistake of just copy and paste without owning it Uh, because you can never go back to your boss and say, it's not me. (laughs) It's uh, it's a barred ChatGPT. You will be fired and your boss will not want to work with you. And they will say, okay, I can work directly with the, with the bot if you are no, no value. No, like Mm -hmm. that's the first thing. And also if you have a team, like if I'm a manager and I have somebody working for me producing the work, I, and I give that to the CFO and the CFO say, what is this? Like, like it doesn't make sense. I cannot just blame my team. Mm. I have to own my mistake because I am the manager. So I see it this way, but I also always uh, see the, the glass half uh, full. Mm-hmm. And imagine before when there was no possibility to fly mm. or even to was really f- just for the rich. So maybe like uh, our parents or our grandparents, they could never travel when they were 20s, mm-hmm. in their 20s. Now, like you and me, I guess I was in Asia when I was uh, in my 20s. Mm-hmm. And there, like I did some good experience, but also some bad experiences. Like you eat food, you you have like, you lose maybe like your wallet and then you are like, oh, why did I do that? Why did I take this decision? <laughs> and you learn from that, from this. Like now, if I go to Asia, I'm so comfortable because I've been there so many times. Mm. I, I talk to everybody. I feel really good. And why? Because I've been there. I failed. I tried a lot. And now I'm experienced about it. And so I think it will just be an accelerator of failures, but also to see what works, what doesn't work. And I really think that uh, if somebody who is young and start his work the problem will not be chat GPT or AI making him do mistakes. The mm. problem is who is there as human mm. to drive them. Mm. And now like with everybody working remote, like you don't have like uh, a team of five people working in the same room. And mm. where like, if you have a question, you can just uh, come by your, your boss or your senior and just ask, Hey, like, how do I do that? Like, it's really frustrating for young people. Like I will never want to be in their shoes to start a job and you have to work like five days or four days a week at home mm-hmm. and you have nobody to help you. Mm-hmm. So that's, for me, it's there the risk and not uh, AI. Mm. I think maybe that's another another way that managers and, and leaders need to step up then to make sure that they're not just thinking in terms of up, upskilling in terms of financial expertise. They're also thinking about, right, well, how can I upskill people in the way that they use the tools as well? Yep. Um, and I don't, I don't think we're there just because it's not it's not everywhere yet. It will become everywhere, obviously, when, when Copilot becomes more accessible and it's just built into everybody's office. But I use an example. One of my team, um, 
they're interested in AI. They don't really know how to use it. I mean, they see my posts, but they're not heavy users like me, who's always got three different tabs up with different AI bots, <laughs> as I'm sure you're, you're the same. But if you use Edge, the browser, um, you've got Bing Chat slash Copilot built into that now. Um, if you use Bing to search, then the chat pops up every time, right? Um, they don't know how to use that, you know, and they might give it a go, you know, um, but it's up to me as a team leader to train them on how to use it for the best use cases. So I think, right. yeah, people in isolation are going to struggle to make the best use. So I think managers probably need to step up as well. Yeah, it's like if we take the analogy with Excel and you see somebody in your team, like basically doing computation, like because I saw that, <laughs> like calculating two cells next to each other with their, uh, like, uh, with their mini um, calculator, mm -hmm. and then just putting the result next to it mm -hmm. instead of just using sum of cell one plus cell yeah. two. And if you see that, like, you will be furious as a manager. Yeah. So when you see somebody like trying by themselves to write something really complicated, and you're like, you, your ideas are clear, so why you just don't say to ChatGPT, uh, okay, write me uh, in a better way uh, how to solve this issue? And those are the five solutions that I have in mind. Mm -hmm. You will be done in five minutes instead of spending half an hour drafting something alone in your Word document. Mm -hmm. I, I will be like this as a, I have a small team now. I always tell them, no, like, don't do it by yourself. First, uh, like try with ChatGPT, do this, um, then come back to me and let's see what is the result. Mm -hmm. And they are three times more productive. And also each time they come back with something really bad, I tell them, did you read? Like, they, <laughs> do you understand why it is bad? And I explain them. And, mm -hmm. I, and I tell them say, also, like, what is the better way to use ChatGPT for this? Mm -hmm. Where are the risks? Where mm -hmm. ChatGPT, if you ask ChatGPT, uh, give me... Um, like, help me about my budget. Mm -hmm. Well, it will think that is about personal finance budgeting because that's the most common use of budget in the language of humans. Mm -hmm. Now, if you say, I'm CFO, help me with my budget, straight away you get something about corporate finance budget. Mm -hmm. And this I, you need to explain to people. Five.